Hey everyone, it's Kayvon with Ascari Art. So as you may know, I love different types of textures and experimentation with carbon fiber, with uh, wood, canvas, so on and so forth. Most of my uh, alcohol inks are done on canvas, but I've always had a great appreciation for the traditional artists who used to paint on linen back in the day. So I've always wanted to paint on linen alcohol ink on linen to be specific. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stretch canvas or linen. Um, my example is going to be linen on a on a stretcher frame. Let's get started. And this process could be done on a homemade stretcher, on a uh, you know store-bought frame, or the, even the ones that you assemble yourself. But um, for this process, this is small enough for me to capture on video. And the process of actually stretching it correctly and doing the corners um, is what this video is going to be about. Um, the tools that you're going to need, uh, you're going to need obviously a staple gun. Uh, this staple gun could be a manual one or an electric. I have shears that I use. Uh, this typically, they're really strong and sharp. I cut carbon fiber cloth with this. These, these don't go dull. I'll have all these links on my Amazon storefront. I also have this little guy. This is a canvas puller. We won't be using it for linen because linen is such a soft, uh, stretchy material, but this is what I would recommend if you're using canvas because um, you're going to rough up your knuckles pretty bad over time. So this really helps. Oh, the other the other thing I wanted to mention about the frame. So you notice that this frame has, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but quarter rounds all around it. And this allows for the, the canvas or the linen, the cloth, to stretch off that edge without ruining or, or cutting into the canvas when you're pulling. So that's a really cool advantage to have when when you're doing your store-bought frame. So it's not, so that corner edge will really help. And it also pushes the canvas or the cloth off the stretcher, which is also nice. So when you're painting and you're glopping a whole bunch of alcohol or alcohol ink on it, um, or even oil, it doesn't sit on top of the frame. It's separated from the frame. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna, I need to give it just a little bit of space. So the, the extra that you have is good. You can always cut that. But as you can see here, I'm only giving it, I'm literally having it go over the edge. All right. So now that we've got it cut out, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna start stretching. So the first thing that I would do when stretching is just grab one side and you don't have to pull on the first slide, side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lay in one or two staples. Okay, so you've got two staples. And then what we're going to do on the other side is we're going to actually stretch it. So we're going to pull here, make sure that it's the opposing side, and just hold it and drop. It's kind of hard to do this on camera, but we're going to do our best here. I'm gonna pull it towards me so I can actually do the staple better. And as I'm pulling the stretcher, the, the cloth, I'm pulling it diagonal out towards the corners because I don't wanna leave any kind of creases. And as you can see here, you can see how it's starting to stretch. You can kind of feel the difference here. Um, it's going to start, it, it, it should sound like a drum pretty much. And then, so now that I have the two opposing sides, now I'm going to turn it and again, not pull too much on the loose end because I haven't stapled the other side. So we're going to just like drop again, two staples. And then now I'm going to turn it. Now, if this stretcher is big, you would have to walk around because that's just, you walk around it and basically try to staple this down. Unless you want to try to move it, it just gets really hard when. So we're going to drop two staples here. Make sure you're pulling. So you're pulling away like that. I'm pulling from this corner. I'm pulling towards the corner of the. There we go. So you start seeing it's this like very tight drum like uh like the the top of a drum so 
I'm gonna do all the edges this way. So I, I, I keep rotating. So I'll keep rotating. I won't pull one side. I'll put the staples in and then I'll go to the opposite side and actually pull and do that. So let's, let's speed this up. So now that we've got the sides done, uh, we're going to focus on the corner. And as you can see on the corners, it's, it's not stretched and stretching this properly will ensure that this corner is tight right now. It's really soft. Like I can push down on it and you know, again, for, for canvases and stretchers on stretchers that are custom made, there's certain rules to it. Like the first rule is on a stretcher, you want to make sure that this edge here is wider than an inch to an inch and a half. I mean, that's, that's typical gallery artist grade stretchers. And you can see if you go buy those in store bought, those are typically more expensive than these like three or five pack uh, canvases. And that has a different presence. The other thing about a, a custom made canvas that's important is the corners. So when you fold a corner, you want to make sure that it's squared off like that. Um, that's typically how a nice, uh, stretcher is like a canvas stretcher is you you corner off the you, you square off these edges um so and i'm going to show you how to stretch this corner properly so that it makes sense so what we're going to do here um, i'm going to move this so you can see i already have sort of this this basic it kind of folds that way so if i like have it like that typically i would grab a corner and i would stretch it across the, the corner, I would grab a piece of the fabric and fold it within like that. And it starts doing this naturally because it's in a corner. So, and I would pull it so that it is in line with the corner of the stretcher right here, as you can see. So I'm literally pulling it and bringing it across. This may be really hard to see on camera. And then what I do, um, I, I, the rest is kind of squared off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, grab it, pinch it, and then just bring it across like that. So that'll give me my square um, corner. So first, let's get started. So what I'm gonna do, that was just a demo to show you. I typically do that first before I start stapling. So the first thing I need to do is pull this. This is the underneath. I need to pull it and put a staple on the bottom. So we're gonna do that first, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, again, see it's already done because I did a demo of it. Um, just now I'm going to grab this corner, this corner edge, and I'm going to stretch it, pull it and stretch it against the corner of the canvas right here. And all I'm doing, it's hard to see. I hope you can see it. All I'm doing is just folding it so that there's a crease right here and I'm pulling it across. Okay. So we're going to drop a, drop another staple there. Okay. And then right here you see the naturally now the corner is the it's there you see that right right over here so then i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just like tuck this bottom piece in and pull it because now we're trying to pull this side we've already pulled this side from the bottom now we're gonna pull this side and all i'm doing is just kind of pulling it and putting it down i'm gonna drop one staple here and just one staple here. There you go. So that is a nice corner and it's, and it's tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's as tight as the rest of it. So let's do the other sides. Okay, so you can see here, let's see if I can move it so you can see. So this is facing down, right? This corner is facing down. I'm gonna try to do this side facing down as well. But as you can see here, it's kind of short and it's okay. It's just because I didn't cut it correctly. So just for this demo. So you just want to mimic it first. You want to practice it first um, before you do it. So we're going to, we're going to do this. I'm going to pull it across first. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this edge and pull it across like that. And then I'm going to tee off the square um, so that it matches the other side. So something like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, since we have excess here, 
this is going to be a little interesting. So we're going to pull the bottom first. So let's pull that bottom and drop a staple there. And then now see, like I'm, I'm actually literally playing with this to get it to where the square looks in line with this. And sometimes you'll get it and sometimes you won't. It just, it's practice. Again, it's just practice, practice, practice. Um, so let's see, there we go. So it just takes a lot of practice. So now that I have this, this corner piece, I'm gonna open it back up, pull this, drop a staple right there, and then reach it over and pull it across like that. And I'll drop a staple here and here. So you can see the corners are the corners are basically they're not even on this piece. I would have cut the fabric better, but this is just for this demo purpose. You can kind of see. So I'm going to do the other sides as well. So now that now that this side is facing down and this is facing down, we're going to do the same thing on this. We're going to have these this side facing up, right? So let's do that. So again, grab it. Let's let's drop a staple here on the bottom, and then I'm going to grab the crease on and see if I can pinpoint the corner of the stretcher, and then stretch this over and across. And sometimes you may have to take staples out. So in this particular scenario, I have a staple right here defining. I may have to take that staple out in order to get the edge, but let's see. So I'm gonna, again, grab this corner, this crease, and pull it across, drop a staple there, and then see if I can fidget this enough and pull it across enough so that it um, makes sense. There we go, so it works. There's one, and there's two. And for this demo purpose, like I typically like to make my staples really nice and, and so on and so forth. But for this, I'm just showing you. Uh, you can always cut this access too. If you if you don't like this, you know, fraying, you can always cut the edges really nice. I actually typically do that after I'm done. Uh, let's do this side. So again, so this side is facing up. We're gonna actually facing down in your scenario because I flipped it but you can see the opposing corners. This one is going towards, they're going towards each other pretty much. See that? So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. There's, uh, let's see, there's one and then there's that. So we're gonna face it, face it, um, face the square edge against uh, towards it. So again, I'm gonna grab it and pull and See, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at the corner to see what it looks like. And right now, it's not good. So let's see if I can show you here. So I'm, I always do the demo first before I actually do the staples. So all I'm trying to do is get this corner right here perfectly on the edge. And by doing that, pulling this in, look, let's, let's do this first. So let's drop a staple on the bottom again, and then... I'm going to pull this edge and drop another staple there, okay? And then you're going to pull that edge in like so. Drop one right here and you can always just pull it slightly more. There you go. And then we'll cut, we'll cut this edge um, so it's not frayed. There we go. And you can cut all the frays after you're done. So as you can see here, now your corners are tight. All right, we just finished stretching linen on top of this stretcher. I want you to hear it. Listen. You hear that? That's what it's supposed to sound like. It sounds like a drum. And so for a typical standard process, what I would do if it was canvas or my, my typical way is I would put kills on it, sand it, kills again, sand it. So I get a really nice smooth finish so that the alcohol flows on it. For this particular scenario, 
and journey that I'm going to take you on with the next video series that I'm doing is we're going to leave this raw. We're going to leave the linen texture and color and we're going to figure out a process to seal it without losing that. It could be polyurethane. I'm going to try it with polyurethane, with polyurethane spray, with the um, varnish, Kamar varnish. I'm going to try different things to see which one allows you to flow alcohol in it, ink on it without ruining the color and the texture because that'll open up so many things for us as alcohol ink artists. We'll be able to do it on any fabric at that point um, if you were able to seal it in a way that alcohol ink can flow. All right, stay tuned, subscribe. I'll have all my tools that I used in this video in the storefront, in the Amazon storefront below. So subscribe, that would really mean a lot to me. Um, hit the little bell on the side, that'll notify you when I make a new video. Uh, can't wait, uh, let's do this together. Let's learn together. Take care, Ascari Art.